I started this channel in the summer of 2016 basically on a whim just because I love to talk about movies way too much. Well, two and a half years later, I was lucky enough to be able to turn my hobby into a full-time career. Well, almost every single day, someone asks me a question about starting a movie YouTube channel. Well, here's my 10 tips for starting a movie YouTube channel in the year 2020. Before I dive into sharing my tips on how to start a movie YouTube channel, be sure to share yours down below in the comment section. Let's make this a nice community where we can help each other start and grow. Just be sure to keep it constructive. Also, if you're serious about really wanting to dive in deep as to how to start and grow a movie YouTube channel, stick around to the very end of this video. I'm going to share some resources that I'm working on right now, and I'll tell you more details at the end of the video. And I do plan on having a follow up video to this in a week or two on how to grow a movie channel in the year 2020 and let's get started. Tip number one, start. If you're interested in starting a movie channel, just do it. It doesn't cost any money. I know some people are just kind of afraid. What if I put stuff out there and people make fun of me? What if it's not any good? I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be very good when you start because nobody's good at anything when they start doing it. You didn't jump on a bike and know how to ride it the very first time. You're not able to hit a pitch the first time one is thrown at you. Everything takes practice to get good and used to it. But the good news is when you first put stuff on YouTube, nobody's going to watch it unless you tell them to. My first videos would only get 10 views and eight of those were from my mom and the other two were from me. When you're starting out, that's how you get good at it. When people aren't watching, you get a lot of practices, a lot of at-bats, and that's where you start to fine tune your skills. But if you're interested in doing this, you just need to start doing it. Like for me, I technically started this channel three years before Sean Chandler talks about it. Hey, this is my first video review that I'm recording, and it's of the first season of the TV show, Arrow. I started posting reviews, and I'd post two or three, and then I'd stop for six months. And then I'd post two or three, and I'd stop for six months. And I didn't get good and consistent until I committed to it in summer of 2016. So if you're interested, just start. Don't overthink it. Don't think that your first one needs to be awesome. It won't. Your first will be your worst. That's a common phrase that kind of a YouTube expert named Sean Canal always says your first is your worst. Just go for it if you're interested. You have to start if you ever want to be good. Tip number two, don't go out and spend a ton of money. The reality is, is that you keep a fantastic camera in your pocket. It's your phone. Almost every single smartphone out there these days has a camera in it that would have blown our minds even just 10 years ago that that was affordable, that you could shoot in 4K, in ultra slow-mo and have the level of clarity clarity and color pickup that your phone probably has, that would have been mind blowing even just 10 years ago. And it's right there in your pocket. A bunch of videos on my channel I shot with this phone and this little tripod right here, both of which can fit in my pocket. Beyond that, the main camera that I used was one of two Logitech webcams all the way up until after I was full time. I only got this real camera that shoots in 1080 and has usable file sizes several months after I went full time, but I used the Logitech 920C and the 930E. You can, if you want to check those out, there's a link down below in the description where you can check them out. The 920 is a little bit smaller. The 930 has a little bit more of a wide angle lens. And so I prefer the 930, but you can get those for under $100 when they're on sale. They're about $50 on Amazon. You can get this Snowball condenser USB mic that has real clear sound for 50 bucks. There's just no reason to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a camera when the technology is just so cheap and affordable these days. So use what you have, slowly upgrade so you don't go into debt starting your channel. Tip number three, try lots of things, experiment. When it comes to being a movie channel, there's a bunch of different things that that can mean. And I'd recommend trying to do kind of all of it. If you look over the history of my channel, I've 
done just about everything there is. I've done the Jeremy Johns quick cuts trying to be funny thing. I've done some video essays at certain points in time. Obviously, I've done a whole lot of rankings and I've just experimented with all kinds of different stuff and tried to decide what do I like doing? What do I like doing regularly? And then just looked at what do other people respond well to? When you're starting out, you might not even know what you're good at. You might not know what you're comfortable with and what other people think that you are good at. And so try lots of different things. And I'll say something controversial. When you're starting out, I think it's okay to copy other people when you're starting out. Even the Beatles, when they were playing in bars early on, they did a whole lot of cover songs. They played other people's songs, figured out the dynamics of the band, and then they became known for doing their own thing. So when you are starting out, I think it's okay to try stuff that you've seen other people doing. You need to eventually figure out your own style, your own look for your thumbnails and everything, but when you're starting, you can look at other people and try what they're doing to just get those at-bats, the practice, so you can start getting good. Tip number four, don't try to do it all. Now, this might seem like it conflicts with what I just said, but let me explain. I see a lot of people that they start their YouTube channel, then they jump on Twitter, and then they get a TikTok, and then they're real active on Instagram, and then they launch a podcast, and eventually they're trying a little bit of everything on social media, but they're not doing any of it really well. If you want to have a movie channel, stick to YouTube, figure that out, get good at that, and don't try and add in a podcast and TikTok and Instagram and everything else. Do one thing for generating big content and then do something for community building such as Twitter or Instagram. But don't try and do all of it really well because you'll just spread yourself thin and you'll never get good at any one of them if you're trying to do all of them. Like for me, I didn't start doing a podcast until a year after I went full time and I'd already figured out my groove with my main channel and then I had the room in my schedule and everything to add something else in. So be sure to be focused so you can get good at one thing rather than mediocre at a bunch of things. Tip number five, your top priority when you're starting out is to improve, to get good, not to grow. I know naturally when you're putting all this effort into it, you want an audience, you want people to see it. So you're thinking, how do I grow? How do I get more subscribers? How do I get people to comment more? But your real focus should be, how do I create content that actually adds value, that's worth watching? Because when you're thinking, I just want people to subscribe, I want more of an audience, that's like a selfish mindset. It's all about what can people do for me? I want them to be my audience. It's not thinking, how can I add value to other people? That's how you need to be thinking. What can I do to earn the right to get someone to click subscribe, to get someone to comment and care what I have to say? And that requires getting good at this, it constantly improving. So there's kind of three ways to think about improving when it comes to kind of having a movie channel your content itself, do you have something worth people listening to? Do you have something original to say? Can you say it clearly? You have an idea, a concept, can you say it in a way that other people understand what you're trying to communicate? And three, does it connect with people? Do people actually pay attention to you? Do they start the video and get to the very end? Because just assuming that because you put it out there and they clicked on it means that they want to watch the whole thing, that's a really big assumption. You have to earn the right by having something to say that they can understand and you actually connect with them. So that's three different areas where you can try to improve when you're in your early stages and don't worry about growing until you've actually got a quality product worth being viewed. Tip number six, read and watch a ton of movie critics. Way back in like 1995, one of my friends introduced me to Leonard Malton's movie guide and that kind of became my obsession until they stopped printing them. So for like 20 years, every year I would get the new Leonard Malton movie guide and I would just read through it and kind of learn the way that he looked at movies and the language that he used to talk about them. Back in the day, I used to watch Siskel and Ebert and then Ebert and Roper and just kind of learned how other people analyzed 
film. And that kind of set me on a path to kind of how to talk about movies. And I think that's what you really need to do if you wanna have a movie channel and have something to say. If all you do is watch me or just watch John Campia or Chris Stuckman and take all your influence from one person, you become just a parrot of them. So what you wanna do is expose yourself to a whole bunch of different people's way of seeing films. Go on Rotten Tomatoes and just kind of read the little sentences that people have. Find one that it makes you mad and then go read their review because it's not like they're a crazy person. They just see film differently than you can. You can learn from them, even though you totally disagree with them. And what you're looking for is to see how do other what the other people see in films and then how do they talk about them? You're looking for that language that they use. I'd also recommend checking out maybe some books on screenwriting like Sid Fields and some other books like that, Save the Cat. And all of them give you a vocabulary, a template to think about story that helps you analyze film as you're seeing it and give you a language to communicate it in a way where you really have something to say and you can articulate it so that other people understand it. I like to think about it this way. Like I want to say my opinions in a way that helps other people articulate their own feelings. So I've got several books listed down below in the description. You can check those out. These are books that I have read that have helped me kind of form my language and my templates for how I think about a movie review. Tip number seven, watch lots of movies. Now this might seem obvious that if you want to be a good movie critic, if you want to be have something insightful to say about movies that you need to watch lots of movies, but all of us have our tendencies to watch the types of films that we naturally gravitate towards and let that kind of shape the way we see films. But if you want to be really good at this and have something to say even about the movies you normally talk about, Watching different types of films helps you do that a lot better. Watch old movies, watch new movies, watch good movies, watch bad movies, watch foreign films. And all of that will help you get a more holistic understanding of cinema. You can learn a whole lot about film criticism by watching bad movies because suddenly you have something to contrast. You watch this movie that you love and then you watch something that just absolutely doesn't work and you start to kind of piece together how cinematic storytelling works and why certain things kind of move you emotionally, whereas other things just kind of fall flat. But you need that contrast for that to happen. Likewise, you need to watch different types of films so you can fully understand all the different things that you can do with a movie. Like Hollywood blockbusters tend to follow certain templates for how you do things. And you start watching foreign films, you realize that they approach it entirely differently, both in storytelling and just the art of filmmaking in general. So it's so important to watch all different types of films so it kind of helps you see the format much better, have an ability to compare and contrast things much more clearly. This is a point of reference. If you know someone that only watched 10 movies last year, they probably didn't watch some of the best movies and they probably didn't watch some of the worst movies. They just watched the stuff that they normally would check out anyway. And so that limits your perspective on film. So watch tons and tons of movies. Real quick, before I give you my top three, I wanted to let you know about a resource I've been working on called 30 Questions to a Great Nerdy Video. It's basically a mini ebook with 30 different points to think about in regards to posting a video on YouTube. From coming up with ideas to how you shoot it, to the editing, to the sharing and the posting of the video, kind of the full process that I go through. These are 30 things that I think through. And if you're kind of new to starting a movie channel, it'll tell you kind of all that kind of goes into this. And if you're a little bit more experienced, it gives you a checklist to think about where you should be working on things. You can download that for free at the link down below in the description, and I hope it helps you out. Tip number eight, constantly evaluate. It's very unlikely that 
From one video to the next, you'll see this big, gigantic, massive improvement. But if each video you kind of evaluate what did and didn't work and pay attention to what people do and don't respond to, you can make these small little improvements all along the way based off your own observations as well as just kind of paying attention to kind of your metrics and analytics on YouTube. Like YouTube owned by Google and they're just as creepy as you think. They track absolutely everything about your videos so you can know what videos people click on, how many people subscribers you added on a video. You can actually track your audience retention and exactly how much of the video people watch. It gives you so much information that you can learn from. So if you evaluate constantly, pay really close attention and learn from that, make little changes in applications and all of it, you'll just keep getting better and better. And that's kind of what I did with my channel. You can watch my early stuff. All female cast, the internet went nuts, and now we have the movie. So how is it? It's really different from what it is now, but there wasn't like any single big gigantic jumps. It was like, here's one improvement and another improvement and another improvement and just a steady steps of evaluation, seeing what works, making changes, experimenting, going, oh, that didn't work. Let's not do that. Okay, this didn't matter. Constant evaluation, constant improvement. That is how you get better and become a channel worth people watching. Tip number nine, plan ahead. My channel really didn't start growing until I started to plan ahead. Going into 2018, I made this big, gigantic, massive plan where I looked at all 52 weeks, the first week of the year, and mapped out all the movies coming out and brainstormed what are all the different videos I could do related to all these different movies coming out, what are all the fun editorials, and I just mapped it out. I had this big gigantic plan, and that's where I kind of was able to really make quality videos because I wasn't trying to like quick throw videos together and come up with ideas last minute. That's like microwaving your ideas. I slow cooked them. I thought it out. I watched franchises over a period of time and wrote lots of notes, slow cooked it rather than microwaved it. And so I think that made for a better quality product than what I had had before. And it made for something that people resonated with a whole lot more. And that's where my channel started to grow and take off. So I think planning ahead, thinking through what you really want to do makes all the difference. Tip number 10, get to know other creators. One of the best things that I did when I started out is I met as many other YouTubers as I could and I started collaborating with them. One of the people that introduced me to this idea was Ryan O'Toole. He's still out there, still talk with him frequently on Twitter and on Facebook, still collaborate with him pretty regularly. So I think meeting other YouTubers that are around your same size, getting into the community is pivotal in being successful at having a movie channel. It's a very friendly community where people like to help Help each other out. And I think a key thing is finding people around the same size as your channel. Don't try and reach out to someone that has 10,000 subscribers when you have 10. Find someone right around that same size that has a lot of the same things you're working through and slowly start to um, collaborate a little bit up. But the key thing is just dive into the community, get to know other people and help each other out, actually watch each other's videos, comment with something meaningful on their videos. Don't just say, hey, I got a video too, great video. No, watch it, ask a question, respond, add to the community on their comment section and form your own little niche corner inside the movie space with your own buddies. Uh, that's what I did and these are some of my best friends on the internet that I talk to almost daily over the internet. Remember, if you want to dive in deeper on kind of my thoughts on how to start and grow a YouTube channel, I got that new resource, 30 Questions to a Great Nerdy Video. It's totally free. You can see it at that link down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.